Hello. In this video, I'm going to be talking about an absolutely vital part of econometrics, and that is interactions. Uh, interactions pop up all the time in applied econometric work. Uh, a lot of research designs uh, rely on interactions to work at all. Uh, so what is an interaction? So an interaction is what happens when in a regression model, you include two variables multiplied together. Right? They are interacting the variables together by multiplying them. And typically we will also include the variables by themselves, but we are also including them as interacted. So here's an example of a regression equation that includes an interaction term in it. So here we have y regressed on x and z as normal, but we also have x times z as its own variable. Uh, we would of course call this the interaction term. This is the beta three is the coefficient on the interaction term. Now, why would we want to do this? The purpose of this is to allow the effect of one variable to be different depending on the values of a different variable, right? So we did polynomials, for example, in the last video. Uh, and in polynomials, we said, well, maybe the effect of x, the effect of a one unit change in x might be different depending on what the value of x is that we start with, right? So maybe the effect of x is very small for certain ranges of x. It's very big for other ranges of x. But why do we have to make it based on the value of x? Why not make it based on the value of a different variable. Uh, and so uh, here we're saying, what if the value, the effect of x is different for different values of z? All right, and what we're really doing in ordinarily squares is we are fitting lines. We're using lines to predict values, to minimize the sum of squared residuals. And we can think about what we're doing when we add a control by itself, right? What happens when we add just a control? If we have z just as a control, right? Y is equal, has a, is a function of X and Z. What we're doing is we're saying we, we're looking at the effect of X on Y, right? We have this slope. We're looking at the slope relationship between X and Y, and we're adding Z as a control. And what that's saying is we can move that line up and down to better fit values based on the value of Z, right? So at Z equals one, we have a line down here. Z equals three, we have a line in the middle, and the Z equals five, we have a line up here, right? Adding it as a control moves the line up and down. An interaction term says that's not enough flexibility. I don't just want to move the, the line up and down. I also want to make the slope be different depending on the value of z. So the slope relationship between x and y can be different depending on the value of z. And this, that's what this looks like. So not just at, when I go from z to 1 to 3 to 5 does the line move up. It also gets steeper, right? And that's coming from this, inter this uh, regression equation right here where I'm regressing y on x, z, and x times z. Uh, and you'll notice, by the way, that I have 1.02 on the interaction term as a coefficient on the interaction term, telling me that as the value of z gets bigger, the slope on x is also getting bigger, right? As z gets bigger, right, uh, then the coefficient on x is getting bigger by this amount. So uh, how can we actually interpret this? When we have an interaction term like this, again, the idea here is we're getting the effect of one variable to change based on the value of another. And a good way to think about this is to write out the equation and think, well, what is the effect of one of the variables? So what is the effect of x in this regression equation that we have right here? One way we can figure this out is by taking the derivative uh, with respect to x. Uh, we can also just look at whatever x is being multiplied by because we don't have a polynomial. So what, what is x being multiplied by? When x increases by 1, what does y increase by? Well, it increases by beta 1. Cool. Good on that. It also increases by beta 3 times z, right? So the effect of a one unit increase in x is not just beta 1. It's beta 1 plus beta 3 times z. That is the effect of x. It depends on the value of z. One thing we can take away from this is that these coefficients by themselves don't necessarily tell us the value of x. We want to make sure that we are always considering all of the coefficients together when we have an interaction term like this, as opposed to considering them independently. Uh, so the effect of x is beta 1 plus beta 3 times z, which means that I can plug in different values of z to get different effects of x. So if I plug in a value of z equals 0, then I get that the effect of x is beta 1. If I plug in a value of z equals 1, then I get an effect of beta 1 plus beta 3. If I plug in a value of z equals 3, I get a, a, an effect of beta 1 plus 3 times beta 3, right? Well, I'm just plugging in values of z, and it's changing the value of x, specifically through that coefficient on the interaction term beta 3. Now, commonly, uh, we are using that one of these terms, especially the one that we're uh, interacting with, is a binary variable. It makes things a lot easier to imagine. 
Uh, and in this case, we can go back to our typical interpretation with binary variables. What happens if we include a binary variable as a control? Well, we are looking at the difference in means for y between the different values of the binary variable. Are you married or not? What's your, log what's your average log earnings, right? The coefficient on married tells me the difference in average earnings uh, between people who are married and people who are not. Now, if I include it as an interaction term, an interaction with that binary variable, it's still telling me a difference, right? It's the difference in the effect between people who are, if the, if the variable is married, married or not married. How does the effect of this variable differ for married versus non-married people? And the interpretation works in a very similar way. So let's take this one right here. So what I've got right here is a, a, an interaction uh, model uh, where I'm regressing log earnings on whether you're married or not, whether you went to college or not, and then the interaction term between the two. And let's say I'm interested in the effect of going to college, okay? Uh, so if I look at the coefficient on college, it's 0.85. If I look at the coefficient on the interaction term, it's negative 0.25. How can I interpret this? Well, uh, what is the effect of college? Well, if, if, if college increases by one unit, well, then the y should increase by 0.85 plus negative 0.25 times married, right? Because that interaction term is there. Uh, and so what this is saying is if I set a value of married to zero, if I'm talking about non-married people, then the only effect of college is 0.85. And I would say among non-married people, college increases your log earnings by 0.85, right? Now, what about married people? If I set married equal to 1, then suddenly the coefficient is 0.85 minus 0.25, or rather it's 0.6, okay? So I would say among married people, the effect of going to college is an additional 0.6 in log earnings. And then the difference is this coefficient right here, the negative 0.25. So I get three conclusions here. One, I can say among non-married people, the effect of college is 0.85. Among married people, the effect of college is 0.85 minus 0.25, or 0.6. And I can also say the difference in the effect of college between married and non-married people is negative 0.25. Okay? I can also say, because this is an insignificant coefficient right here, that there is not a statistically significant difference in the effect of college between married and non-married people. Right? I'm estimating it's different, but it's not a statistically significant difference. Right? The effect is... Uh, uh, indistinguishably the same for married and non-married people here. So to sort of sum up, an interaction term is when you multiply two variables uh, by each other uh, in a regression and include it as, as its own variable. Typically those variables will also be included as their own independent variables. Very rarely do you want to omit either of them. Usually one of the variables is binary, which makes it a lot easier to interpret the, 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 inter the interaction term. Uh, that, that interaction term, when one of them is binary, is telling you the difference in the effect of one variable based on the value of the other. So what is the effect of college? It's one thing. How does the effect of college change as you go from being non-married to married? That's what the interaction term tells you. We can get the effect of the variable at when the interaction term is zero by just looking at the coefficient itself, right? When married is zero, here's the effect of college. Uh, and then I can see how the effect of that variable changes as I go from 0 to 1 for the binary variable uh, with the interaction term. As married goes from 0 to 1, then the coefficient on college shrinks by 0.25. Uh, the coefficient on the variable by itself gives me the, the, the effect when, when the other one is 0. Uh, the coefficient on the interaction term uh, shows me how it changes as one, one of them changes. Since this is insignificant, I can say there is not a significant difference in the effect uh, when, we, uh, when we go from non-married to married. A lot of the intuition that we already have about binary variables applies here, except instead of uh, the effect of binary variables on uh, doing a means comparison for the outcome variable, it's a comparison of the effect itself. How does the effect compare across different groups? Is typically how we're going to do this. Now, a lot of this logic, of course, works if the interaction term is, in is continuous, but that does get a little bit more tricky. Two minor things that I want to add on at the end here. First of all, how do we do an interaction term in R? It's super, super easy. All we got to do is take one variable and multiply it by the other with an asterisk. Uh, this will by default include both X and Z and X times Z, all of them together, which you pretty much always want. If you, for some reason, only want the interaction, uh, using a colon instead will give it to you. So for example, if I do X plus X colon Z, that will give me X by itself, because I said X by itself. It will also give me the interaction term, but it will not give me Z on its own. 
Uh, by the way, also, if you're doing some sort of uh, hypothesis test uh, on the interaction term and you need to refer to it, you will want to refer to this x colon z version of it because that will be the interaction term by itself. So that was one note. That's how you can do these interactions in R. Uh, the other note is about statistical power. Something to know about interactions is that they are statistically very poorly powered. Uh, getting the effect of a variable is tough enough by itself. Uh, you know, you need a lot of data to figure out, to deal with a sampling variation to get your, your, your coefficient pinned down just right. Doing it in smaller groups is harder because we have half as much data. If we split the data into two, well, we have half as much data to work with, with estimating either of them. And even tougher is not just seeing what's the effect over here and what's the effect over here, but seeing if the effects are different. Which, remember that interaction term is telling us, are the, is the effect different, statistically significantly different between these two groups? So you're asking a lot of your data. A good rule of thumb is, is if you need a certain number of observations to get a good estimate of a coefficient, you need 16 times that many observations to get a good estimate of the difference in, coefficient, in that coefficient between two different groups. So that is a downside of interaction terms. You need a lot of observations to make it work properly. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, that's the basics of interaction terms. We will get a lot more practice with interaction terms as we go through the course, because as I mentioned, it's an integral and key part of a lot of research designs. So it's gonna pop up over and over again. So you'll get plenty of practice in. All right, thank you.